Hello. Once again, uh, I like to thank all the new subs and comments and all that. Um, appreciate it. Uh, this next one's going to be more of a. I guess it's an encounter. Uh, you make up your own mind by the end. Uh, and this is this is uh, whew. uh well a little backstory on a location um there is this place it is a popular place everybody would go swimming um it was that old uh rock quarry that uh they dug i don't even know man um i know that the <clears throat> one day one day we were down there fishing and swimming and uh, some fancy dude in, in a swimming suit with all these oxygen tanks and scuba gear and he spoke he didn't he didn't talk like us he, he talked like he talked like he wasn't from around there um, he showed up you know he said he was with whoever I don't know it's over my head at that level but I remember he looked real fancy, uh, all, you know, Ken doll looking, and he put on his scuba gear, and he, he went in there, and he went swimming around for, like, two hours, it seemed like, while we were fishing and swimming, and, uh, he came up, and he told us where everything was when he came up, um, and back off in the, in the one corner was where all the equipment was when they hit the water and it, the water gushed out and like there was a couple pieces of equipment that were upside down on the one side um, so it looked like it blew the original equipment back uh, like a hundred yards 200 yards it was a really big rock quarry by the way um, it was a good five football fields six football fields across by uh maybe two football fields wide uh maybe three i don't know you know everything's bigger when you're younger but um but anyway off in the back corners where the event happened and it flooded it with mineral water it uh that was one of the the crazy things about this place is you you could see all the way down to the bottom from the top on a nice bright sunny day it was like you were in air it, it was crazy now don't get me wrong I mean you could tell you were in water but you you'd have to see it to understand it you could see the bottom of the the quarry and you're like a hundred two hundred feet up it's just insane uh, it give you a real quick eerie feeling um, real quick and back off in the the other corner was where I guess you know they had quarried it but they didn't like I suppose the natural form of the land at one time went down in there because the trees uh, there was trees growing down in this part of the quarry and uh, you could see them sticking up and reaching out all gnarled and stuff and it it was also super eerie um, really eerie uh, that's the part we'd like never even re uh, went to you know <clears throat> but you could see all this another thing you could see is uh, somebody back in in like the 70s uh, I guess after watching a couple movies thinking that uh you know a Volkswagen can float on water which I mean they could don't get me wrong but this wasn't normal water this this was mineral water so when that thing hit it didn't float because that mineral water was super thin like it, it took twice the effort to swim through it um, which I mean I think that's how why we grew up so strong at swimming because uh, we had to swim in that water and that's what we got used to swimming in. So when, when we hit normal water, boy, we were just flying. It was like swimming in a river wasn't nothing. Swimming in a pond, oh man, 
after swimming in that mineral water for year after year after year uh, it, it, you were you just swam different but anyway this this Volkswagen it come up on the on the one side uh, the road came around and went up top and this Volkswagen back in like the 70s or whatever I uh, thought it was going to jump off this cliff, land, and just, you know, get it all the way around and come up on the, the old road that went down in the quarry. But it, it didn't happen like that. It just sank. So over over below the cliff where you would park, um, and there was like this white Volkswagen Beetle. And uh, that was another thing the, uh, the scuba diver kind of confirmed. Because it was kind of a local urban legend how all this went down. So it, I remember that was one of the things uh, my dad specifically asked. And uh, that scuba diver confirmed it was a like a 72 beetle sitting right down there. Um, but, uh, and he also saw in this, this quarry, man, catfish bigger than him. He didn't even go towards where these fish were, but he told us where that where they were, and he said they were albino, like white. <clears throat> but um, something else we liked to do was um, hold our breath and carry big rocks underwater so we could walk on the bottom, and we would hold our breath and carry rock after rock after rock and we piled up these these mounds so far out because this uh this road that was the like the original road for the uh the mining it went around like a j <clears throat> and it just steadily got deeper and deeper so we had walked rocks out and made mounds to where we could get up on top of those mounds and then jump up and get a breath of air and then go back down and carry more rocks further out and built up a, a higher mound <clears throat> to do that even further out um, but yeah we could hold our breath for a, a really good amount of time compared to the average person because we did that every time we went there once we started doing it we did it every time we went there, year after year, uh, until we had made, I think we got up to the third mound, way out on that road, dude. Uh, it was, it was pretty cool. Uh, something else <clears throat> is, uh, one of my brothers had made these, uh, spear fishing things out of, uh, metal coat hangers and uh, tent rods <clears throat> and um, he would hold his breath you know we had that extended breath capability from carrying the rocks so he would hold his breath and go down there and sit and just wait for the fish to come back around he got a really nice uh, sized bluegill one time he come up with it on his on his uh homemade spear and he was pretty proud man uh, everybody got excited over it it was pretty cool uh, just another random memory so I digress again um, we would go swimming there this is I'll just give a side story about swimming there these were the good old days of summer, man. We'd go down there as often as we could. Uh, my dad found out about it because uh, what he did there for a while uh, brought him in that area. And uh, the the guy that ran that, that area uh, told my dad about it. So we got that insider information, you know, and uh, we'd go back there. And, you know, we do like fishing and swimming. Uh, I remember one time uh, I was fishing there and, and my dad had these, these old handmade lures uh, that he had paid for back when we lived up north. And there was this old man down on the, the boardwalk 
on the coast uh, making these handmade lures and uh, he had bought some and he you know he he treasured them <clears throat> but one of them was a, a like a triple linked rainbow trout and it was painted up nice and it was it was a really big lure um, so it was hard to cast and I really couldn't cast it that far but you know I kind of put it on there without him knowing and I cast that out there by when <clears throat> we'd come down on where the old road was and it'd come down by this by the by the one side of the cliff and kind of cut in and it'd go down to where the water started and right there where the the water first started <clears throat> off to the right you had some uh, you know like reeds and stuff that uh it wasn't de you know the water was shallow enough they could grow and uh, past that it got too deep and they just stopped but I had cast it out next to those and I didn't know how to work the lure so I was sitting there trying to work the lure and figuring it out and I had thought I got it snagged on them reeds because all of a sudden it just stopped moving and I felt really bad you know because I'm not supposed to even be using this lure so I like you know I jerked it real quick trying to break it loose and when I did that lure come up with a huge bass attached to it man it broke the surface of the water and just tail walked uh, so the reeds were to the the right it tail walked away from the reeds off to the left and that caught dad's attention he turned around here I am I'm I'm holding a rod like freaking out and the bass it is the biggest bass uh, he'd seen in years, and it's attached to the the line that I'm holding, you know. And he's like, "Ooh!" He makes when he gets excited when we're fishing. Um, several of his his fishing buddies all make the same sound. It's like this, ooh, 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 almost like a a, a gorilla sound. Uh, they would make fun of each other for doing it, but you know that all hit at the same time I knew he, he was doing his gorilla sound so he saw me fighting this fish man and I, I fit this fish and I didn't even know if I had it because then all of a sudden it went limp and I'm just reeling it and what it was doing it's swimming straight at me <clears throat> coming straight up into the shallow so you know and I'm reeling 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 it and right off so it gets shallow but where the road goes in you got a sheer drop off right there to the left and that bass come up over that little that rim right there and dropped off into the deep and then the, you heard it it said it just started pulling that line and then the fight was on and, you know and it, it it took maybe 10 minutes to get that fish in and uh that, that's the biggest largemouth bass i have ever caught and uh he was he was pretty proud of me that day. Uh, it measured in at 32 inches, like 32 and a third inches. We got a picture of it somewhere, but yeah, it was a 30 plus inch largemouth bass, and uh, it was a male, so it wasn't all you know female spawned up fat. You know, when they got them eggs, they get that belly, but it had somewhat of a nice belly on it, and. Uh, that was a hell of a bass but um uh, it was a good place to fish uh so we we went there a lot another thing we did was uh it had <clears throat> it had several areas you can climb up and jump off the wall you know and so we didn't need a diving board we just needed to be able to climb that wall and you know you had your different levels of jumping you had like your your maybe three feet and five feet and ten foot and fifteen foot and twenty foot and once you're getting up there around twenty foot they have a, a slight run to them you know right around twenty foot it's not really so much a run it's more like a launch on the one from one foot to another you know but those were uh those were all basically on the right wall on that back wall now you had to swim all the way across the quarry which in my opinion that was part of uh if you couldn't do that you didn't need to be going over there to jump off that wall to start with you know what i'm saying but you had to swim all the way across that quarry through that thin mineral water 
that you could see straight down to the bottom in. So you had to already have that brazen audacity right there. And then you had to get to that wall and out of all the climbs, that back wall was the hardest climb. Once you got up top, I mean, you, the highest, the top was probably a good 100 foot. 110, 120 foot, but a solid 100 foot uh, drop. But you wouldn't go down, you wouldn't go off from there. I've seen a couple kids, uh, college kids, they would, but I never did. There was another area you climbed down about 15 feet or so, so you're down at about the 80, 85 foot area. Uh, and that's where I love to jump off of, and you had notches up there uh, where people would leave a notch, you know and uh so it was almost a challenge and i remember you know <clears throat> i'm not going to mention which one did which that way they don't take offense but one of my brothers could do it and one of my other brothers only did it one time and he never did it again uh, but the, the option is you get up there and you chicken out you got to walk quite a while through some thick brush to get around back to where you park and uh, you ain't doing that if you're in barefoot swimming gear you know what I mean good luck so you got to go and you can't climb back down there's there was like five of, I don't know there was three or more areas where it was a once you go up you ain't coming down type climb that would getting up there was another challenge you know what I mean like first off you had to swim second off you had to be able to climb and then third off you needed to be able to jump you know what I mean <clears throat> so uh, that was fun and I loved going over there and jumping and going you know just jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping that's what I did it was like a, a workout man uh, but it was awesome but and then you know swim back across with the thoughts of those man-sized man-sized catfish albino things down there you know but so that's another thing we do there but uh when when my brothers were in college there was another thing we did there and that was uh party and uh the this this event happened at one of them parties um, so we were hanging out doing our thing you know college college kids and you know doing doing what we do and uh, I wasn't in college but anyway we had the fire going and we were you know participating and we had we had a huge fire this is that this is that time where we learn <clears throat> this is that time that we learned that uh, cedar and pine was combustible uh, and we had a huge fire and we had fun and you know the night went on <clears throat> I really couldn't tell you much about the night um, it's more of a blur versus uh, this 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 event so we had all you know we had fun we figured we figured out how sap was burnable we had fun and stuff and we were all passed out it was like two or three in the morning and uh one of our friends had woken up and for some odd reason decided to tell me he was going to go to the bathroom now we didn't even have a tent all right we were all just passed out around the fire on uh, different kinds of bedding material whatever we had brought I, I really couldn't point it out you know whether it was a sleeping bag or just just some blankets we were all just spread out around this fire it was um it was 10, 10 or 12 of us. Uh, I can't quite remember. 
but he came over and he he told me hey uh, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go pee and I was like all right you know so I didn't think nothing of it you know but he had woke me up so I kind of just laid there and because of the uh, the beverages I had I had drank earlier I I found myself needing to, to go to the restroom uh, not long after I remember him saying he was going so I thought it all right I went ahead and I, I wobbled myself on up the fire had died down to like a, a, a bed of coals with like a couple little burst flames that they were so they were so dull they didn't really change the light much they just shifted it around you know so uh first thing i did because i felt all chilly and cold was a <clears throat> i walked over there and i poked the fire a little bit and i rolled over a couple pieces and got some flames going and i threw a couple other logs on there you know and i turned around and i walked <clears throat> we were uh we were all sleeping on that cliff that i was telling you about the uh the volkswagen jumped off of we were down from where that Volkswagen jumped off of, up on top. We were down from that edge of that cliff about uh, half a football field. I know I use football fields as a, a, a way of measuring stuff, but that's just kind of how everything was gridded out back in those days. Uh, but uh, we were back about 50 yards from the edge of the the rock quarry and that's where our fire was so you know I stoked it up I got it I got it burning a little bit um, and I think this was sometime uh, I believe one brother was finishing college and the other brother was going in so it was fall you know once again it was fall um, you know and everybody's moving around and I believe some of these fellas the reason we were doing this is some of them is gonna be the last time we were seeing them you know what I mean it, like there was a reason we were doing this and um, <clears throat> so he woke me up I stoked the fire and then I went up towards the where the the Volkswagen jumped off to go pee and I knew I was wobbly so I'd stay back and I, I remember I was I was using the restroom and I heard my name and it was being screamed and it was coming from way far away and it was the fella that woke me up and said he was going to go pee not more than five minutes ago ten minutes ago maybe and uh, now it sounds like he's about a uh, half a mile away and he's yelling for me and it freaked me out and I instantly dude I woke up everybody else we all heard him yelling this was like this was a major deal like everybody's wigging out what happened and I'm explaining dude I don't know he woke me up he said he was going pee I got up not long later I did that to the fire I went to go pee and now he's yelling you know and it's like so we're all getting everything we're <laughs> we're all wobbling around trying to gather our you know we need to get our crap together type brain mentality you know and so um, <clears throat> we all loaded up in the truck and uh, maybe 50 yards 100 yards further back down this path um, it opened up into a, a pretty big field and um, the fellow with the truck turned his truck out towards the field because this the screaming was coming from out of the field so he pointed his trucks that his truck that way and he had those uh, KC uh, floodlights on the top of his uh, truck he turned those on and, and lit up that field <coughs> and some of us stayed in the truck and others went out to where he was yelling and screaming from and once we uh, realized he was in this thicket you know we kept coming and going from the truck getting different stuff to try and figure out how to get to him 
and uh, the people in the truck they ran you know high beams and the spotlight towards where everybody else had to run and so we all went towards where he's yelling he just keep he's yelling and he's help help you know it, it was really freaky dude we're talking like 3 in the morning 3 30 in the morning and we get there and this is messed up we had to chop and pull and break and chop he was in the middle of the thickest briars you could have possibly found and he here he is he is in the middle of all of them without a scratch on him in his boxers no pants no shirt no shoes yep yes sir we get him out of there and he is terrified he is terrified and he kept going on about this little old lady little lady who was all like just blacked out with gnarly hair man he kept going on about her and it, he, he was freaking everybody out we just told him you know he was seeing stuff and we couldn't you know looking back that was really messed up and we kept telling him whatever he was saying was wrong you know we couldn't find his pants his shoes or his his shirt those were gone but the fact is is we found that boy in the middle of the thickest briars without a scratch on him and there was there was a good 10 of us there that know exactly what I'm talking about that know exactly what I'm talking about and it was it was a it was a messed up night dude it was a messed up night and um, yeah I don't know you tell me was that an encounter comment like subscribe and share Thanks.